Hello, hello, and uh, super happy to meet you here again. Uh, we met last year, in uh, two years ago in Torino. I even asked you some question after your presentation, which I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, the question. Uh, and you do. Oh my God. So, <laughs> I'm super uh, excited about having people who have a connection, who make, who themselves represent a connection between the real specialty coffee world and science. Because here, it's uh, already second time I can notice that there are scientists, scientists who are super uh, absorbed with their subjects and have little connection with the reality. And luckily we have you, who you are a Q grader, you also know about brewing coffee, so far I know, uh, you are closer to a consumer side, and you represent this connection, this bridge between science and reality. So thank, thank you for being that. And uh, your report was really, really interesting. Um, you are studying, you were selecting methods, best methods to differentiate between coffee qualities, right? Yes. And specifically the qualities like a cup scoring 80, 82, 85, blah, 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 up to 90. And according to your study right now, there is not much difference, right? Uh, machines cannot tell it. People can still differentiate it a lot better than the machines. Well, thank you for this interview. It's a pleasure talking to you. And um, meeting you again here in Cocoti. I remember your question uh, in my last presentation was about my presentation of this year, uh, if I would um, do the same methodology with the specialty coffee. Ah, yeah. And I was going to do it. it. Yes, and I did <laughs> it. <laughs> I was doing at the same t uh, at that time, um, the last cocoa tea in 2017. Well, um, regarding the, um, the, the scientist, um, scientific community and uh, sometimes the distance that they have of the specialty coffee industry. Yes, this is my life. <laughs> so I need sometimes to uh, prove to the industry that we need science. Yeah, I need to prove the science that we need the industry as well. So it's a big challenge, but I really like to, you know, to be walking in both kind of areas. I think we can um, learn a lot and we can give back a lot as well. So yeah, this is my big goal. <laughs> so I, I, I really want to keep doing it, both things, the industry and the science. And uh, my PhD, we try to uh, confirm the sensory analysis that we do as a Q graders. And we try to say that sometimes um, the, uh, we, we probably uh, could use the machine to, to tell this. Uh, the thing is the complexity of the coffee as a food matrix, it's high. So sometimes the machine, it won't give us some specific details that the human being can give. Yeah. Well, it's really uh, interesting to find out. So we, yes. we do give a huge difference in scores and uh, ultimately prices between a cup scoring 80 and a cup scoring uh, 90. Two and etc. up to 100. Yeah. So the prices for 90 something scoring geishas, they just rock it. Yeah. And, and the machine should be able to tell the difference. Yeah, Maybe the we don't know where to look. Yeah. Uh, uh, where, where to find it. The machine tells the difference, and uh, in our predictive models, we found this that the difference exists and uh, the coffees, they are really different uh, between them and they can classify as they are classified. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that if I call the 81 score as a blue for the machine, it would uh, recognize as a blue kind of coffee. Okay. Let's put it this way. It's just what we tell to the machine, uh, it confirmed. The machine confirmed what we, we say that is different. So what we didn't find was the biggest um, markers to say uh, which compound would be like great to tell the difference. But probably this, this problem that we had, it wasn't because of the machine, but it was because of the, 
the beverage that we used. Oh, you mean you mean you yeah. use the SCA standard yes. preparation, and the yeah. machine would prefer something more concentrated yes. <laughs> to tell this, <laughs> to tell <laughs> to tell something. Yeah. So that's a nice challenge for the future to, to examine it more and more. Yeah, yeah. And we need time, and we need uh, and money. And money. <laughs> yeah. This well, is science. This is science. We need time and money. Yeah. Just like business. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, my next idea was to make it in reverse. Uh, Lucas proved uh, that, uh, for example, when we were calibrating Russian Q graders to Brazilian uh, Q graders in, in the Roasters Village project, yeah. he discovered that we are pretty much calibrated. Mm -hmm. Definitely in the Q system you can find huge uh, disparities, huge imbalances in scoring coffee and in other systems as well, they're not perfect. However, if you find a really uh, sustainable mechanism of using the machine to uh, identify scores like 80, 81, blah, 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 up to 90, uh, I suggest that we check it back and yes. after the machine sets the results, defines that this is a 90 point coffee, we can serve it to people and check again whether the yeah. machine is more or less in the right direction or not. Yes, I think you are right. This is the direction that we need to, well, to go now. Uh, we need to do some more tests and do the reverse as well, uh, for sure. But yes, uh, the problem in the coffee industry, the specialty coffee industry, and with the Q graders, it is the lack of calibration sometimes. So we need to keep tasting different coffees all the time, and sometimes we don't have these coffees, for example, in Brazil, we don't have um, coffees from uh, Colombia, from uh, the Central America and Africa all the time. Yes, because we can't have those coffees. We need to find a way to have these coffees. And uh, the, the, the opposite is, is also a reality. So I think it's, well, the, in both areas, we need to, keep doing it. <laughs> it's not because I'm a Q grader that I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I need to, no, no, to have I'm a consistency. Being a Q grader is just like having a license. A driving yes, license. it's a it driving license. It doesn't make you yeah. a good driver yet. No, definitely <laughs> not. We need to keep trying and tasting and uh, calibrating ourselves. So, and also sometimes we are calibrated in some kind of coffee. So, um, tasting a lot of uh, South Minas Gerais coffee. Uh, and coffees from Caparó as well. So I'm pretty uh, calibrated with these coffees. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I can give a high score to a geisha, for example, and it might not be the best one. So uh, for us, we need to be like this. And for the machine, we need also to exhaust the models. We need to do a lot of tests. And oh, yes, of course. Yes. And we, one more thing to, make, to leave it as a teaser to those who will be watching us yes. is that I suggested to make a small research regarding the influence of roast profile. Yes. Because obviously, sure. even in the COE contest on, in the daily routine teens in the um, roasting teaching classes, I can tell that it's a huge impact on what you finally score. Yeah, definitely. And we need to use your beautiful machines to explain that, to describe that properly from the scientific point of view. I agree. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> In Brazil, we do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay.